Hi, this is Nate Morris from the Shoots Canyon Fly Shop. Uh, we're going to tie up a little prawn pattern today. Going to get the thread started. This is on a Umer small tube. I like tying tubes for steelhead flies as much as possible, uh, especially with the bigger intruder style, that kind of thing. You just get a little better, little better hook set. All right, we're going to take some orange saddle hackle here. Tie it in by the tip. I'm going to go ahead and secure that all the way through just to create a good flat body to work with here. I'm going to add some orange Lagarten flat braid. One of those things, there's a lot of things you can use for a body. Um, if you use this, you won't regret it. It's really, really nice stuff to work with. Lays perfectly flat. And it creates a really nice body. Get that tied in again, going all the way, tied all the way in here. Just butting up each section to itself, not overlapping here, just creating a nice flat body. Sometimes I'll um, add mono eyes at the back here. Um, before I did any of this, but not today. Tie it off in a couple wraps. Wrap our saddle hackle forward here. Sometimes that happens, not a big deal. Let's go ahead and start back over. Not a big deal if you got a couple trap tackles. Um, most of this is just to add a little body, anyways. But we want it to be pretty too, so. Alright, here's where I do things a little bit differently than most guys. I'm going to go ahead and tie in my couple of saddle hackle tips here. That I've got pre done. I want to tie them in backwards. I'm going to come out the front. As such. Lady Amherst tail here. These end up being kind of feelers for a prong. In the round, I'm going to add oh, probably six to eight ostrich hurl on top and six to eight ostrich hurl on the bottom. It's all the way around the tube. I'm 
If I tie everything in reverse here, when we finish it out, it's going to have a lot more body to it. Really going to help this fly have some size without adding extra material or weight. Alright, now here's the magic here. We're going to add a little legally bought polar bear. Put it in the dubbing loop here, a little red pea bear here. Don't need a ton. Small section here. Well, it's always good to start these kind of dubbing loops uh, horizontally like this. Um, keeps that material from folding over on itself too bad. Get it started and then give her a quick spin. Pick it out a little bit. Uh, polar bear is really nice to work with for uh, intruders, um, those kind of things that you want to add some body here. Um, it's a nice stiff material without uh, being too difficult to work with. Really nice and translucent uh, and it has some size to it as well. Really makes it nice to work with. All right, we're just going to wrap that full one and tie her off. And what this does, it, it gives uh, the rest of our material something to lay against when it's in the water. Uh, again, giving it that look of size. And even looks pretty good. All right, and again, you can see how this is just nice and translucent, but still has body there. And we're going to add some silver pheasant, some hot orange. If you've never worked with silver pheasant before, uh, for steelhead flies, do yourself a favor go to your local fly shop and buy some silver pheasant. Um, so much easier to work with. Uh, in my opinion, looks a lot nicer uh, than like Guinea. And it's so much easier to work with for maybe a dollar more a package or so. Really isn't that much when you consider you're going to tie 30, 40 flies with it. Tie that in. And wrap her forward. And because we tied this. Our last materials, the, the, the materials are going to flow over everything. Uh, since we tied them in reverse here, you know, it really doesn't matter about having a bulky head or anything like that. We're going to put a uh, cone over the top of it, and that's going to kind of make everything go away. And it's going to look really nice. Not that this is too bulky, anyways. But. You know, here's where I'm not really concerned about how many wraps I do there. I'm just looking to finish it up. Alrighty, and we're going to whip finish this. Uh, if you don't whip finish with fingers, that's going to be a real problem with all this loose material out here. Um, I've always finished with fingers and it gives me uh, the ability to make a big enough uh, whip, if you will, uh, to avoid all that material out there. Alrighty. That's yeah, a hard as hole, or as I'm going to do here, Sally Hansen's hard as nails. Real 
a thin layer all the way around. Something you can learn from your girlfriend or wife is uh, if you blow on it, it dries a lot faster. It makes perfect sense. Okay, now we're just going to add, um, this is a Pro Cone disc uh, by Pro Tubes. Um, I definitely like working with these more than anything else when it comes to uh, cones for tubes. They're just, they're sized to do it, which makes it really nice. Remove the fly here. All right, this is a little bit tricky, but it's not too terribly hard. You just want to make sure you don't trap your material here as we get everything kind of bent back and out of the way. And we'll slip that tube right over the top here. All right, make sure everything's where we want it. So we got all that done here and what I'm going to do is just burn this tip down and I'm going to cut it back just a little bit. I don't want too much material hanging out there, just enough uh, to be able to burn it back and create a little head for you there. Alrighty. Make sure this is straight up when you do that. And always have a bodkin handy if you need to reopen that hole. Do that while it's hot. Alrighty. There's a quick, easy, but pretty still, um, little prawn there. Uh, super cheap to tie. Uh, you shouldn't lose a whole lot of them. And uh, if you foul hooks, you're on a tube fly. Alright, thanks for watching.